I'm Alan Spears with Occupy Democrats, and it's time to break out the tinfoil hats and the Viking horns as we are diving deeper into the cult that is the supporters and MAGA nation of Donald Trump. Now, I think we all recognize that at this point, if there is someone out there that supports Donald Trump and is part of the MAGA movement, nothing's going to change their mind at this point. If these people still support Donald Trump after the numerous felonies, the infidelity, the mocking of the troops, the mocking of people with uh, physical disabilities or ailments, well, at this point, I don't think anything's going to shake them. It really is sad to see all of these people uh, getting caught up in this cult, because that's exactly what this is. This is beyond a political movement. This is beyond supporting someone who embodies your ideals. This is a person that has somehow managed to start the world's largest cult. Now, January 6th really helped shine a spotlight on the amount of people that still support Donald Trump and the variety of crazy that is really embedded in his base. Now, while I would say that the vast majority of Donald Trump supporters are just your everyday Americans, and I would say normal, to a degree at least, uh, there is a huge amount of his supporting base that are not normal and that are indeed a little bit, let's call them eccentric. For some examples of some crazy that is truly deeply embedded in Trump's base, you have to look no further than Jacob Chansley, aka the QAnon Shaman. Now I'm willing to bet you probably recognize Jacob Chansley as the unofficial mascot of the January 6th riots as this Viking Shaman ridiculous man uh, was pretty much front and center for all of the media's attention during these events. Now, Jacob Chansley was sentenced to 41 months in prison for his crimes because they were crimes and he was not a patriot, he was a criminal. But it would seem that the QAnon shaman has inspired numerous others to be copycats and sort of unofficially take up the mantle of the QAnon shaman. In a clip I'm about to show you, some more of these QAnon shamans uh, have decided to kind of step into the spotlight and a few of them were seen outside of the courthouse in Donald Trump's hush money trial. Now, it should be noted that these shamans and their new age nonsense and craziness probably won't be around for much longer, at least outside of the courthouse, as Donald Trump's trials are wrapping up and we are set to be done with this probably in just a few days. Now, in case you missed our video yesterday, or as a gentle reminder, the Secret Service that are in charge of protecting Donald Trump right now actually met with the local prison authorities and the staff to basically discuss the logistics of if, or hopefully when, Donald Trump is convicted and found guilty. It is so incredibly exciting to me that we are possibly days away from Trump putting on the orange jumpsuit and finally going into that prison cell. He has earned it. And with Donald Trump potentially going to prison, I'm not really sure what these shamans are going to do without him, though there are plenty of politicians in the far right and MAGA movement that I'm sure would be happy to have their crazy support. Now it should be noted that these shamans are not the only ones who are present outside of court today as a challenger, a rival to AOC herself made herself known. Yes, Tina Forte, the New York Republican congressional candidate, uh, decided to call out AOC and kind of throw down the gauntlet in a challenge. I'm sure she had something incredibly well thought out and articulated to say to her Democratic rival. She didn't. Take a look and see for yourself. America! Yes. Thank you for participating in this ceremony with us. To America, you guys are all blessed. The, the um, crooked press media, the liberal press media, you are all blessed. We got, we got Ian. In January 6th, there was one and now three. Fire more finish for AOC does nothing for her district. She goes to Met Gallus and she forgets her district. 
should have rich off being a congresswoman go and her district is in she, shambles. She her bad. I am the Republican and conservative candidate for District 14 and I'm here to say it's time for her to go back to the elites and stay away from our district because she doesn't represent us. She does not represent the people. Our district went to Mierda. You know what Mierda is? <laughs> Donde esta Alexandria? Come and debate me. Come and debate me. Fireaoc.com. You should do it like a rap. Like, <laughs> I'm from. What's your name? Yes. I'm Tina. My name is Tina Ford from District 14. <laughs> wait, wait. Go. You got this. Okay. I'm, yeah, do it. I'm do it. I'm, I'm from. My name is Tina Forty, and I'm here to say, District 14 is the only way to beat AOC. This must be done because Trump's. MAGA is the only one. Yeah. Oh. Fire the wolf. Yeah, yeah, but <laughs> Okay, just temporary pausing the story. I swear to God, I saw this video this morning and thought that it was a comedy sketch that had somehow got misinterpreted as like, oh, this was like news. This is something that was happening outside of the courtroom. And it, this reads like a Tim and Eric sketch or like something from Eric Andre. Like, I could not believe that this was actually real but uh, and all right let's let's dive into it let's just look at these guys these three gentlemen have decided to show up outside of the courthouse waving around sage i believe in an effort to purify the area i'm not really sure it is wild to me that these are adults these are people that theoretically function in our society that drive a car that vote this shit's terrifying. <laughs> so our new age shaman decided to start throat singing outside of the courtroom, waving around a bit of sage to presumably purify the bad vibes of the liberal press media, I believe, as they said. And there they go, just purifying and throat singing away, uh, doing their best to, I guess, support Donald Trump. And of course, we have to have the Trump flag as a cape. Of course, we have to have the bull horns, the helmet, we've got to do the whole vibe, but we don't just stop there. And then in the most poorly choreographed moment I've ever seen, under their breath saying, let's stand up on three, and then they do it, and they say America not exactly together. This, this video is insane. And let's not forget Tina Forte. Throwing down the gauntlet, challenging Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez herself, um, it's probably not going to work out for her. Look, lover or hater, AOC has an unstoppable energy in the Democratic Party and is, in my estimate, kind of the antithesis of Trump. Whereas Donald Trump and his supporters tend to get really pissed off about things that aren't directly supporting white Christian nationalist America, AOC's grassroots strategy seems to be pretty effective and something she employs fairly regularly. Additionally, she's also managed to tap into this uh, restless energy that a lot of the younger generation has, that a lot of younger millennials and that Gen Z are feeling right now and feeling disenfranchised from the government. AOC has managed to redirect some of that frustration into getting involved with politics. She's also tried to keep in touch and connected to the younger generation with mixed success, but has made the attempts such as streaming on Twitch and doing live streams to talk to her audience and her supporters. Now, I'll save you a little bit of time. If you go to fireaoc.com, it just takes you to Tina Forte's website where she's talking about herself as a candidate and where she's running. And as you might have imagined, she is exactly the kind of person you would expect from a politician at a Trump support rally, no matter how small it really is. She's big on law enforcement. She's huge on supporting building the wall. And she wants to stop socialism and AOC's socialist agenda to bring down our country. She's absolutely just another mouthpiece that is parroting the same rhetoric that Donald Trump has been peddling for years. And I really just don't understand the level of cognitive dissonance and sludge that is these people's brains and how they function in our society. These are the exact same politicians that say, oh, I don't want to live in a socialist country. I don't want to live in a communist country. I want good old American freedom. And yet, at the same time, their guy, Donald Trump, said he's going to be a dictator day one. What is wrong with you? And really, what is the absolute cherry on top is this horrible, wretched freestyle rap at the end between the shamans and Forte. 
Now, full disclosure, I don't typically listen to rap very often. I'm not as familiar with the artists or the genre as most. However, I would personally like to apologize to every rapper and every musician and every artist in the industry that had to listen to that wretched sound that has to, I assume, be called a freestyle rap. And joking completely aside, I feel like these shamans with their throat singing, these politicians that are challenging one-on-ones with AOC, these freestyle raps, this is just indicative of the Republican Party just disintegrating from within. I don't even really know how the Republican Party still functions. It Well, it doesn't, but I don't even understand how they are even in name working together at this point. There's clearly the traditional Reagan era Republicans like Mitt Romney who are still going about and still kind of preaching these old school Republican values. And now there's the new age Republicans, the far right, the MAGA movement like Marjorie Taylor Greene who just spew whatever lies, whatever nonsense just float into their brain. Now, the United States was never intended to be a two-party system, and I had always assumed that the independents would eventually have enough footholds, enough supporters, that they would kind of become the third party and help kind of spread the votes around. I never expected the Republican Party to possibly be the genesis of a three-party or more system. But of course, this is merely speculation, and it's going to take a lot more than a handful of Shaman and Tina Forte to create a new third-party system in our country. But we'll keep you updated if that does happen right here on Occupied Democrats. Make sure you subscribe and stick around for more.